Today, we're going to be checking out Lost in the Pond, and we got six ways British and American driving is very different. Yeah, I'm interested to check this out because if I go to America and stuff and I rent out a car, I'm going to need to know how you guys are driving differently to us. I know you drive on the other side of the road that we do. Apparently, there's six more other ways that we're driving differently. So, yeah, let's jump into this and check this out. It's if you've ever seen those country roads in the United Kingdom, I think half of American cars wouldn't be able to fit. They'd have to cut <laughs> yeah. through the fields and potentially kill hundreds of cows, you know, Yo, bringing it back to South Dakota. That's actually true. Our roads are so small. Your cars ain't coming down. I'm sorry. Our roads are so small. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to driving. I think it's a well-known fact that driving etiquette and just driving practices in general are different on either side of the pond. Right. But how are they different? Having lived in the United States now for 11 years, I'm here to tell you, even though I don't drive. From the driving test right through to drive? the cars themselves and, you know, the side of the road that we drive on, as well as the words that we use to describe car things, it just goes to show that Britain and America are two nations divided by a common median slash central reserve. Now, before we get underway, you may be thinking, why should I take any information on this matter from somebody who doesn't drive? Well, yo, you, bro, you can't go to America and not get a truck, man. You gotta drive. <laughs> the, the truth of the matter is, I did try to learn to drive, actually, here in the United States, so I have experience of that. Um, I have no experience back in England, but I've seen right. cars, nearly got killed by one once, I was on my bike. You didn't need to know that. <laughs> and so, without further ado, let's take a look at six ways that Britain and America's car culture is very, very different. Uh, let's see. License. Okay, so before we get into the good stuff, a little bit about how people acquire their licenses in both countries. In the United Kingdom, where I'm from, you can get a full license at the age of 17, but until then, right. as soon as you apply for one, you have to have a provisional license until you pass your driving test. These provisional licenses can be acquired from the age of 15 years and nine months, very specific. Whereas in the United <laughs> well, States, this months. actually varies from state to state. I think with the provisional, provisional just means that you can like drive whilst there's someone else in, in the car with you so like uh like a uh, someone teaching you or an adult or whatnot I, i'm pretty sure and they don't really call that pre-license a provisional license but a restricted driver's license and notice of course the difference between driving license and driver's license huh? and the spelling of license now like i said it doesn't Wait. and driver's license how do you spell license oh you guys spell it with an s license and the spelling of license now like i said it does differ from state to state in south dakota for example you can acquire one of these restricted licenses from the age of 14 years and three Four months and that's issued by a department called the south dakota department of public safety 14 how are 14 year olds like you're seeing over the steering wheel but you know to be fair south dakota is one of the five least densely populated states in the nation so it's, it's the cows that i worry for now 14? that's kind of an extreme example and in any case when we're talking about passing your driver's test and getting your full unrestricted license that will happen anywhere from the age of 16 to 18 depending on the yeah, state 16 now, is in still Britain, young. a driving test consists of three sections you've got your theory exam your hazard the perception exam yep. and then your supervised driving Wait, what? What's this exam? I thought the hazard is involved in the theory. Yo, I didn't do this. Maybe why I'm such a bad driver. I I, I did my theory and then I did my driving. <laughs> I must have skipped this part. <laughs> exam now in the united states or at least indiana where i took lessons i was taught by a combination of my wife and my grandfather-in-law who to right. this very day remain among the bravest people i've ever known <laughs> but to even get to the point of taking those driving lessons i had to take a written test which was easy i didn't even revise for it, it was it was mostly common sense stuff and it I is. had to have an eye test as well just to make sure that i could see things job if i had to have an eye test now bro my license will be gone and once i passed the written test and the eye test with flying colors hazel mainly i was then given a learner's permit or, or was it a restricted license I d i'm confused about that but something was given to me and i was able to drive around something. parking lots for a bit never passed the test and now that i live in chicago don't really need to but i've been in the passenger seat on many an occasion including one where we crashed Probably didn't help that I never took driving yeah. lessons in the UK. But even if I had, I might have been even more confused, particularly because of the next difference. Wait, did he say he was in the driver's seat and crashed? On where we 
really need to. But I've been in the passenger seat on many an occasion, oh, passenger including seat. one where we crashed. Yeah, I thought like he wasn't driving, but the only times that he has, he's already been in a crash. I thought, yo, that's my no. <laughs> Probably didn't help that I never took driving lessons in the UK. But even if I had, I might have been even more confused, particularly because of the next difference. All right, what? What is it? Right I think there. it goes without saying, mostly because most people are aware of this, that Britain and America definitely drive on different sides of the road. Yeah. Indeed, you know, I've heard British people say, why do Americans drive on the wrong side of the road? But I don't think the burden of accountability lies with America. Huh? Wait, is this the map of, like, where they drive? Yo. Yo, I always thought we drove on the right side of the road. Like, the correct side. Obviously not. The whole entire world pretty much drives on the other side. Why is that? That's so weird. India, Australia, South Africa, and us. Don't know what these are. Crazy. That's mad. Guns. Indeed, like the United States, the majority of the planets, not including oceans, drive on the right. Because of this, of course, America has the steering wheel on the left, Britain has kept theirs on the right. But this was not always the case, at least in terms of American cars and American roads. Before the 1908 launch of the Ford Motor Company's Model Look T, that car. virtually every car in America placed the steering wheel on the right. In fact, you know, Ford only made that change to make it easier for people entering on the passenger side to avoid oncoming traffic. Until this, though, uh, long after a law was passed in 1792 mandating that vehicles... Why is this car bouncing so much, bro? What the... Horse buggies and the like. <laughs> what is going on? After a law on? was passed in 1792 mandating that vehicles... <laughs> horse buggies and the like must travel along the right side of the road. It was widely accepted... Why is she bouncing so much? that steering should take place on the right. Evidence of this can still be found today, in fact, in Amish communities where horse buggies are sometimes steered in this manner. Wow. When mass production of American cars began in the late 19th century, it was widely viewed that right-hand steering was the preferred method, since, you know, it had evidently worked out just fine for the journeymen of yesteryear. However, by the turn of the century, motor companies began looking for innovative new ways to sell their latest product. Cadillac introduced the first lever-operated headlights, while the Marmon Motor Company is believed to have pioneered the use of a rear view mirror in 1911 and so it was that Ford introduced left hand steering in 1908. Oh wow. And because it was late. Yo my car wouldn't be able to do that now. Yo that car's sick. It's to seen that left hand steering was conducive huh? to safer driving since it was easier for the driver to judge his or her proximity to oncoming traffic. This new way of steering became virtually standardized by the mid 1910s and has remained thus to this very day. But there is one United States territory that has bucked the trend. I can't lie. I can't lie. I don't know if I was the only one during that, but throughout that whole entire segment, I was kind of more focused on the way the old car was driving. <laughs> Anyone else? But, but listen, I can kind of guess he was just on about how the steering wheel was like, the, the history, why is on the basic side it is now and that's the united states virgin islands there they drive on the left despite the fact that the steering wheels are also on the left it must be chaos who knows i've not tried it but maybe one day now whether you yeah, drive on the weird. right or the left there's no disputing which country has the most cars when it comes to car ownership, Britain cannot hold a candle to the United States. Right. And that probably makes sense for reasons that I've outlined before. We have a fairly well-connected rail system across the entire country. That's something that the United States does not really boast. Yeah, but most people in the UK do drive, right? Surely. And in Britain, most towns and cities do have a fairly comprehensive bus system. So you don't always have to drive to work, for example. No, not really. Or for your kid's sports day. You know, if you take the bus, you've got an excuse if you're late. America is a wide open country, not everywhere has great public transportation. And add to that, the popularity around cars is just a big part of American culture, certainly has been since the 20th century. And so these reasons perhaps account for why there are only 471 cars in Britain oh, for wow. every 1,000 people. I say only, is that, that it? probably sounds like a lot, but that, that number includes children in the population. So oh. if you just eradicate children, not literally, just in this <laughs> scenario, then, you know, that number is going to be quite a lot higher. But if right, that makes sense. Because I was going to say, like, 
half cars to people but yeah in children yeah okay yeah 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 probably still wouldn't reach america's number of cars per person even if you include american children in this some of whom of course south dakota knows all about that because in the united states there are 838 cars for every one uh -huh. people now now certain states in america do have a disproportionate stranglehold right i need to see like a very very like like a stat where it takes away children in the thousand people so like you find a percentage of children that can't drive then take it out of the 1000 and then see that number because that would be mad on this very stat take for example the state of wyoming there are more cars per capita in that state than any other state in the nation there are in fact 1100 cars for every 1000 people it is one of seven Bro. states in the union where cars outnumber people what's going on do Americans just have more than one car? And then there's car per production as well. The United States is the second highest producer of automobiles in the entire world behind China. And it's certainly way ahead of Britain. And so much for the number of cars. What about the amount of miles we're actually driving? Well, the United States absolutely kicks Britain's arse on that one. A 2010 study found that British people no, on average right drive about 6,500 miles a year. Right. Which, if you do the mathematics on that, that's about 18 miles a day. Which, that I mean, that sounds like a lot to me. Me. But that's nothing compared to the United <laughs> States because Americans, on average, are doing twice that amount each year. The average wow. American drives. That does surprise me, though. With how big America is, that does not surprise me at all. About 13,000 miles a year, which is about 36 miles a day. That sounds like hell. And I know that it is because I used to drive from Anderson to Indianapolis and back. You're talking there about 40 miles. So that was about 80 miles a day I used to do. That was, that was Eight, routine. I knew a lot of people. 80 miles a day? Oh, no. I'd, I'd quit the job. I'd quit the job people that were doing that and that's that's not the only commute route of course of that size in the united states and yet again these numbers could be swayed by certain states out west take for example wyoming again uh, 21,821 miles per capita per year driven what are you doing? by the folks of wyoming it is number one in the nation yet again and this that's about 60 miles a day so this is average as well. So like people just what they're just driving around in circles. I mean, this is the state of Wyoming where there are only two escalators in the entire state that they're, they're <laughs> used to doing things the hard way. Right. Size and it's official. Yeah. There are no two ways about this. American cars, and you can quote me are on bigger. this. American cars are approximately massive. For once, I don't really have any statistics to back this up. It's just it's observational fact. In right. the US, you have chunky SUVs, massive four. Bar oh, this is the car I want. This is really nice. Not with the silver parts. I want it all black. Like all blacked out. Oh. I, I won't be able to drive this in the UK though. Trucks and those big family vans that hold up to 287 children. In Britain, you have the hatchback. <laughs> all that to say that cars are just smaller in the United Kingdom. I mean, I have most one. <laughs> things are, right? The roads are smaller. So we have smaller cars yeah. and we have fewer people using them in general. Here, those 4x4 trucks that Marty covets in Back to the Future and eventually gets are fairly common here. You've probably seen them. They're usually owned by people who think they own the roads. It's If you've ever seen those country roads in the United Kingdom, I think half of American cars wouldn't be able to fit. No. They'd have to cut through the fields and potentially kill hundreds of cows. You, know? they actually, you actually want because like some roads in the uk even though you can have like you know two ways so cars come in and cars go in right two lanes bro it's literally the size of one lane and you would have to like go into the hedge and squeeze oh it's bad is bad in a truck you won't be able to do it you I, I don't know how you'd get by you know bringing it back to south dakota of course they're less likely to do that if drivers have a better understanding of signage Huh? There's a big difference when it comes to road signs, and that's partly because in Britain we conform largely to European standards, okay. and Americans weirdly don't. I'm being stupid on purpose, just enjoy it. But that's why British signs around the country are very similar to what you might find in, say, France or Germany in the like. Right, okay. Except, you know, without kilometres, we have miles, despite being metric. And our signs are in English. Unless you're in Wales. Yeah, miles isn't metric, but that's always confused me because we're metric and we do miles, like miles per hour, that many miles away. Weird. Yeah, they're written in 
consonants. And in the United States, there is adherence to the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. This is chiefly federal guidance on road signage, but there are some states, eight in fact, um, that go by their own state's version of what the signage should be. So depending on the state you're in, the signage could be different. So do look out for that if you're ever moving here, or even if you just live here already and you're traveling to another state. And then some states, you know who you are, have a combination of both state and federal regulations. That is called sitting on the fence. Now, quick caveat. I'm a bit lost with these signs. Here, when it comes to US and British signage, it's not all entirely different. Take, for example, the stop sign. They're almost identical. Right. Uh, same with no entry and give way. Yep. Except in the United States. Yield. <laughs> Yield. <laughs> Why does that sound so medieval and It's called yield. Fine, but what about some of the millions of signs that are completely different? Here's a very, very, very brief sample of some of those that you might come into contact with. So our interchange road signs employ different colours. Oh, yeah, I prefer this. Yeah, with my eyesight, I can barely read this. And just different markings in general. Uh, no parking signs. This is very important. Take a look. Uh, yeah, you can kind of guess that's no parking. Make it simple. <laughs> Look, they are quite different in colour and in just appearance in general. This is your speed limit. Ah, uh, yeah, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. I kind of like the yellow, I'm not going to lie. Right here, compared to the United States. And not only do train crossing signs differ from country to country, but in the United States, they usually use the word railroad crossing and the sign looks like right. this. And as somebody who doesn't drive, the no pedestrian signs are the ones I look out for and they are quite markedly different yeah america like to just tell you <laughs> just in case you know what it's easier because then like you actually don't have to like be like oh what what is this Can, okay no walking right no but yeah there sure. are some funny ones too tanks allowed uh what bro in britain i've never seen this bro i've never seen a sign where it's got a tank on uh, that's true in both the United Kingdom, in parts of the United Tank Kingdom, crossing. and in Pennsylvania. Basically, there's an absolute plethora of signage differences. I only scratched the surface there. But getting all of them into this video would have been an uphill struggle. I only said that so I could get <laughs> that sign in there. And actually, while we're on the subject of wordplay, that brings us on to our final entry. Words. There are a staggering number of terminological differences to do with automobiles between the United States and the United Kingdom. Right. This is partially because, of course, both countries devise their rules and regulations around the roads independently of each other. But, and this is by no means an exhaust, <laughs> If list. Here are the key differences. All right, in British English you have bonnet, in American English you have hood. Uh. You have boot instead of trunk. Bumper instead of also bumper but maybe sometimes fender car park instead of parking, parking lot. Like, central yeah. reserve instead of median median wait what's the central reserve i don't even know what that <laughs> i don't even know what that is crossroads instead of four-way stop right curve stop. instead of bend driving license instead of driver's license <laughs> dual carriageway instead of divided highway or freeway Ge freeway gear yeah. stick instead of gear shift or shifter give way instead of yield, yield. indicator instead of turn signal or Turn signal. <laughs> or blinker. Lorry or truck, uh, whereas blinker. in the US it's usually just truck. The generalized right. British term motorway can encompass anything from expressway to highway to interstate to freeway. You've got motorway Why services so area or simply services, which equates in the United States to rest area or rest stop or right. travel plaza. You Travel plaza. Got pavement versus sidewalk, petrol cap versus gas cap, petrol station versus gas station, right. roundabout versus also roundabout, but maybe rotary or traffic circle. You have windscreen <laughs> instead of windshield and zebra crossing instead of crosswalk. Cool, yeah. And with that, we've hit... I've kind of heard, like, most of them, I'm not going to lie. Red light on this video. That's uh, That was a reference to the stop lights the sub on traffic lights, not... Not the dodgy area of Amsterdam. Uh, there's plenty more to say on this subject, and I dare say I will do so in the future. Meanwhile, let me know in the comments what your... Good video. Enjoyed that. Yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. If you guys ever drove in the UK and in America, let me know how you found it. But really good video. Enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, make sure you give a thumbs up. Subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv. If you guys want to check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.